think it's good to talk and see how different everyone's circumstances are because ultimately we think we're all in the same boat but actually our circumstances are very different. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Sophie and this is Just Doing This Now. Doing in my way. It's, it's Mental Health Awareness Week in the UK at the moment and inspired by this and the events in my personal life as well as COVID-19 I thought I would create something new with the opportunity to share more about me and how I've been feeling during lockdown. Corona has been a fanfare of emotions. I found this and my desire to be productive quite overwhelming and on top of this with the closure of the gyms and our CrossFit gym it means the physical wall has been put up between me and the CrossFit community I've come to love and massively rely on. They're my friends and more importantly they're my motivators. I've decided to call upon a few of my bullpen friends, my bullpen buddies, Georgia, Ree and Paul. They're going to be joining mindfulness and compassion coach Rose Escarfi. Here's the video. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. So, hi guys. Welcome to the channel. Hello. <laughs> hi. Thank you so much for joining me and for sharing your experiences. Mentally it's draining. I'd say all things considered pretty good. I've only cried maybe three times, which is actually probably less than my usual average. Certainly with the last few weeks, it's started to get harder. I think maybe as restrictions get lifted, it gets more frustrating because you're still, you're still following the restrictions. You just want to do more and you can't. I live with my mum and my dad and my brother is back from uni, which has been great. So like living by myself, haven't really seen anyone at all. Also, I had to self isolate the two weeks before they announced lockdown. So I've actually technically been in lockdown actually like two weeks longer. The thing for me is I'm very goal orientated. So if I had like, we can go see someone in three weeks time, then work towards that. But without that, that's what I'm struggling with. I have the complete opposite to Paul. I've uh, got my whole family around me. So I've got Jess, Harriet and Finn. So 11, eight and one. I'm still working full time. I'm running my business as well in the evenings and I'm still training and homeschooling and uh, finning. It's a two-sided coin for me because I absolutely love them all being around. Flip side, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. when the girls go to bed. Mentally, it's draining. Yeah, it's tough. I think that's the tricky part of this time, you know, I think everyone's circumstances are so different. There's no like one size fits all. I'm very privileged in the fact that I'm very close to my family, but something that I have noticed is old emotions and traumas and things coming up, especially because we are in this family environment, things from childhood that you didn't think bothered you so much. All of a sudden you're like, oh, this is why I hold resentment, you know, towards you, mom. But ultimately everyone's situation is so different. It's really important to not feel like you should be doing something to feel better or you should be thinking a certain way because it's just so subjective to each household. You have to see what you can do with what you've got. I think people are giving themselves a really hard time about things that they've got no control over. Old patterns and old habits will probably be starting to come up now. It's, we've been stripped of our distractions, you know, and whatever win we haven't been dealing with, we're probably having to deal with, unless we're super busy like Ray. I think it's good to talk and see how different everyone's circumstances are because ultimately we think we're all in the same boat, but actually our circumstances are very different. <laughs> you want me to answer that now? Motivation with training is rarely an issue. It might be because I come at CrossFit from a competitive point of view and I like I love the community, I love coming into the gym, but I haven't done classes in five years. I go to the gym for the social side of it, but I go to the gym also to train for competition. So with that in mind, the purpose of training for me is still to get better to compete. And that's still my goal. That hasn't changed. 
from a competitive point of view, I almost think of it as I have such a competitive advantage here. I can get so much better in this time. This is such an opportunity. And for me, it's kind of twofold. So whole lockdown started and I was like, yeah, I'll do home workouts and all the rest of it. And a team of people that do my coaching done a home workout plan with no equipment and all the rest of it. And I've done four workouts, partly because I don't enjoy it. And partly, I think, also is because I don't enjoy home workouts. Part of going to the gym for me is actually getting out of the house. I only live in a smallish apartment, so right now I'm kind of working because I'm fortunate enough to not be furloughed, relaxing, and then also supposed to be working out in one room effectively. And that's just didn't sit well for me. So I focused instead on running and cycling, and I'm really, really enjoying that. And it's nice as well having the time to do it and not having to worry about trying to recover so then I can go hard in CrossFit sessions. I'm not motivated in a strict, like doing CrossFit workout sense, but I'm motivated in other areas. But I completely get where people might not be motivated to do home workouts and they might not want to run or they might not even be able to run or, or whatever else as well. So I, yeah, I completely understand not being motivated. It's my time to escape the people I want to kill in the house. So it's like perfect. <laughs> You're massively motivated then to get into that garage and do the workout. <laughs> I love training. I've, I like G. I've never struggled with motivation. I've always trained. I've always done something. I, I don't like sitting down. Social media helps massively. Knowing that I'm posting and sharing on social media helps me feel like I'm not actually alone. So I've got a good community around me that I've built up and it's it just feels like I've got people who are, are there, even though they're not actually there, but they'll see it afterwards. So I kind of feel there, Rose, that I'm against like proper athletes right now. We're, we've got a distinction here between people who approach to kind of fitness is more recreation as opposed to like more competitive. Um, I think the intention behind why you're doing it is the most important thing to consider. So for Re, it's your business. For Georgia, it's your business, right? Um, you guys are doing it because, you know, it's part of your life. It's actually incorporated into your life because of the career you want to do and, and the rest of it. For you, so why, like, I actually, I'm going to turn the question around on you. Why did you start CrossFit? <laughs> <laughs> You want me to answer that now? Yeah. Because it looked fun. It looked mm -hmm. so fun. And I just wanted to, I want, I wanted to stretch myself and I wanted to get really strong. You've pretty much answered the question. You, you did it, you know, for fun. You wanted to change up. And it's not for you spending 40 hours a week somewhere completely different. It's not uh, an intrinsic part of your life. It's not incorporated into your life as much as it might be for the others during this time we've seen so much transformation so much change and we've had to adapt we're not giving ourselves enough credit for having to adapt for having so much of what's common for us stripped away from us like even just going to the supermarket it's not it's not the same we don't get to socialize be around the same kind of people this whole like adaptation process it's been completely out of the ordinary and we think that we need to take everything that we were doing before and kind of weave it into like what we're doing now and that's not necessarily true for everyone like i said the intention behind why you were doing something in the first place is really important to consider especially you know going back to social media we have all of you know all the people on our feed and we see what they're doing and sometimes like you said it can motivate us really but the other, sometimes it can send us the complete other way but ultimately, again, it comes down to comparison and comparing yourself to other people and being like, well, I should be this motivated. But actually, Paul, what you've done, I think, pat yourself on the back. You've adapted in the way that you felt like you needed to, you know. It, it wasn't right for you in this circumstance and you had to make the changes necessary and that's the way to do it. You have to really take into consideration, you know, like, what is my circumstance right now? And why am I doing it in the first place? I feel inspired and I don't even do CrossFit, so. <laughs> I've got most of the equipment, so I don't have that like direct issue in terms of like, oh, I can't do this or that. Yeah, I have had this sort of, oh gosh, like what about when I get to the gym and I do ring muscle ups? Like, oh, I, oh, I can't do ring muscle ups. And to be honest, like, what can I do about that right now? All I can do is like the next best thing. 
for, for me, yeah, I've got some low rings and I can do plenty of strength work on them. But even if I didn't have that, you know, doing press ups, doing all the core work, like there's so much that, you know, you can do. And I understand that it's, there's much less motivation to do it because quite frankly, it's boring. And that's all stuff that we can do. And in general, like my approach is like, what can I control? What can I not control? Um, if I can control it, let's do something about it. If I've ever had any kind of time off because of holiday or work or whatever, the first thing that goes out the window is my fitness. And it just so happens that the one thing I can do in lockdown and do really well is my cardio with the running and stuff. So in that sense, I'm not worried. I'm actually like, oh, I might actually get back to CrossFit and, and be better. You know, we've all got muscle memory. And so once we are back in the gym and that, it will come back a lot quicker than it took us to get to that point in the first place. Actually, I'll hopefully come out a better um, CrossFit athlete. So I've been through this so many times and just recently I've been through this. I didn't pick up a barbell for a year. I didn't do pull-ups for a year. I didn't do toes to bar for a year. I didn't do, well, pretty much everything normal. I just did dumbbells for a year. <laughs> I know I've, I've gone through it and gone through it plus rehabbed my body and come back stronger. So I I try to put that message across and I try to get people to hopefully understand there's so many things you can do with dumbbells that will help you to strengthen things. You don't have a rig, do bent over rows of dumbbells or a barbell um, and you can strengthen the muscles you need for pull-ups. And that's exactly what I did the whole of my pregnancy. Just before this lockdown, I had eight weeks off doing any rig work and any lifting overhead because of my shoulder. And then six weeks into lockdown, I PB'd my snatch. So, and I just PB'd my toes to bar after not having done them for two months. So this is the period now is what I just literally just had off before lockdown yet two months into lockdown i pb'd so hopefully that helps people understand you're not going to lose things just by not doing them for a couple of months it just doesn't happen like that and hopefully i can help people to understand that because i've been through it a lot of times a lot of injuries a lot of pregnancies <laughs> that's a woman with some experience talking there definitely <laughs> I feel inspired and I don't even do CrossFit. So for those who are worried about going back to the gym and losing, you know, their abilities and the, their physique, you won't know until you get there. You really won't know. There's no way that you can know until you're physically back in that gym. You might feel yourself not being as strong, but you don't actually fully know. It's just an assumption that your mind is making. Your mind creates stories. It tries to predict the future. Could any of us have predicted this pandemic? No. Did we all have plans for the summer? Yes. You know, things happen. We can't always foresee what's going to happen. And I think we need to honor just, you know, being completely present. When you do start worrying about it, when you do start thinking about it, just say, well, there's nothing I can do. Like, you know what George said about being able to control it and not being able to control it. That's a really, really good question to ask yourself. But with this specifically, I've, I've been in conversations where other people have said the same thing and they are worried about going back and not just, um, not just CrossFit, but you know, other hobbies, rock climbing, the rest of it. It's something that the collective is experiencing, but again, there's no point worrying about it. Something that I do want to drive home is when you are exposing yourself to worry, anxiety, stress, actually releasing toxic chemicals and hormones. So it's not doing you any good at all like in any way, shape or form. So the best thing to do when you find yourself maybe feeling overwhelmed or, you know, you find yourself inside that narrative, you've been thinking about it for 10 minutes, you didn't realize, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing, you know, this negative self-criticizing thought pattern, you know, it's come back. And what you can do is just focus on your breathing, which sounds really, really simple, but our breath is the anchor to the present moment. It's always happening. If you struggle to focus on your breath, start focusing on your heartbeat, because ultimately what you're doing is you're moving out of your mind and into your body. That's what kind of stops the thoughts from continuing and this, this narrative stops from, you know, spiraling. Because, you know, when we're in the shower, you know, it starts with one thought and next thing you know, it's like the most catastrophic thing that's ever happened and you don't know how you got here or, you know, what happened before, but you know, you know, you're in, in the deep of it. So, it's really important to start noticing when you are having these kinds of thoughts 
um, thoughts of worry, thoughts of negativity. And I'm not trying to say that you have to be positive all the time, but when it comes to something like this, which is completely out of your control, there is absolutely no use sitting thinking about it. And really it's as simple as that. There's no point, don't think about it. It's not gonna do you any good. <laughs> well, it feels like everyone's exercising apart from me. I haven't really been posting much on my personal account. I don't post loads anyway, but I've been really conscious of not really wanting to post much because I don't want to be that dickhead who's like, oh, look at my perfect life, who's got this all this amazing equipment at my home gym. I'm not saying that, 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 that we shouldn't be posting that. I'm just saying that if I'm coming to that. <laughs> <laughs> if, we're, if we're gonna be doing that, I think it's really important to be aware of the message we're putting across alongside it. And I certainly see a lot of people putting a message across alongside that that I don't think is particularly positive. Um, whereas as you said, like Ree, if you're sharing that content and you're doing it knowingly and responsib responsibly, um, you know, and you're using it to create positivity and to motivate others and she just keeps getting better and you think you know she's had a year off a year off doing but and i'm like how how is she still doing more toast bar than me i'm i'm 23 like what so she can do it and i, I think that comes across to her followers as a motivational thing i don't have that motivational inspirational thing like if i'm posting i'm just like woo look i pb'd and i'm, I'm not i'm not going to do that but I've been posting loads on my dog's Instagram. He just hit 5,000 followers and social media. Yeah, we talk about it in fitness and mental health, but even just looking at cute picture of dogs, like if that's your thing, like I think that can be really positive. So- um, Definitely brightens my day every time. I completely understand that it's a very real problem with people scrolling through Instagram, especially in the health and fitness world, seeing all these people that are shredded and tanned and amazing athletes and whatever else and getting very down on themselves and being like why can't i do that i completely understand that's a thing i can't relate to it because i've never i've never felt that i follow the athletes i want to follow see what they're doing great it doesn't actually affect me i think i'm just fortunate like that social media like during this hasn't really changed much for me i do think it's great like a lot of people that i follow that aren't part of crossfit or health and fitness and stuff it's great actually seeing them going oh i've gone for it a run today or I've started the couch to 5k program and stuff and that's great and that will always get like a like and a comment and it's like yeah you know keep it up because I think everyone should be active you know and um, they don't all have to go on to compete or whatever else but I think just general active being active is gonna help a lot with everything um I don't do social media <laughs> <laughs> what's that <laughs> I have try to change a bit the way I'm posting. I always try and post something that people can do at home. I always try and do something that people are gonna find useful. So whether it's like handstand tips or things I'm working on, things I struggle on that I know can help other people so that you can do it at home against a wall. You don't have to have a garden or a gym. You can go into your lounge and do some handstands or you can work on your core which like she said earlier, everyone neglects, but you can do it now. Yes, you see all these videos of like me and the girls, we're, we're happy, we're dance, we're smart, but that doesn't mean that is us living our best lives. It's stressful and I try to put that across so people know just because I'm spreading positivity doesn't mean my life is like the best thing out there. We're trying to make the best of a bad situation and so I'm trying to spread positivity. There's no point in me just crying into the phone and oh, I, don't my life. I want to kill my husband. Oh my goodness. There's no point. No one wants to do that. I think it can be negative, and I do totally get that because when you see people smashing it up and you just think, oh, I wish I could do that. But I think if you can if you follow the people you that are positive and spreading positivity and spreading things you can do that's the people you want to be following right now whether you mute people because they're just not good for your mental health right now rather than unfollow you don't have to unfollow but you mute them because you you don't you want to still connect with them but just maybe not right now so i think it's it's definitely picking who you 
look at. Unfortunately, I don't have much time to sit and scroll anyway, so. <laughs> My experience is completely different in the sense that social media does affect me, not because I compare the way that I look, it's more the amount of information I'm consuming at one time. So I do sit and scroll for like, I can easily scroll for a good hour or two. I was picking up my phone in the morning when it was, you know, when the uh, lockdown first started. It's the last thing I look at before I go to sleep. And I got to a point and, you know, my feed looks very different to yours. So I don't have a lot of health and fitness. It's mainly mental wellness and the rest of it. And it just became so overwhelming for me. And I didn't feel like I could contribute anything extra to the content that was already out there. And it was making me feel a little bit inadequate in a way. And I, could, I, and I knew that's not actually how I felt. It was just this phase that I was in. So I actually had a nine day social media detox. I deleted all the apps off my phone, WhatsApp too. So um, I had no contact with anyone for nine days basically. And within that I did a silent day. So I felt like that's what I needed to reset. But I know that that's not the right thing for everyone else. It's just really having to see, you know, why, why? you know, again, the intention behind it. So for me, I create content mindfulness compassion content and i just felt like at this time i don't think people should be consuming this much information it's not doing me any good so i need to cut it out because i have a business and i see people like re who amazingly post every single day and i'm like how do they do that every single day how can you be bothered um so that was something that i had to work on you know within myself um, and I needed those nine days to just really spend and do that. And I think if you feel like you are overwhelmed by social media or you feel like you've got a problem in the sense that you can't stop scrolling like myself, really force yourself to, to have a detox. It will be really difficult to begin with, but it's going to last about two days and then you'll get over it. You'll be absolutely fine. And now that I've got my social media back, I've got a much better balance. And that's just what I had to do. So it will be. It'll be really painful. <laughs> you worried about going back to the gym? I mean, I know on top of that, I'm just literally worried about the DOMS. The thought of going through that physical pain that I went through the first six months of doing CrossFit, that alone is just like But look so if you're basing that off a past experience. Who, how do you know that it's going to be like the first six months that you did CrossFit? Like you just don't know. It will be. It'll be really painful. <laughs> Sometimes you just know. Yeah, like I know what I'm talking about. Like <laughs> Embrace the pain. Don't we love the burn? I think it's important also to consider the expectations that you set yourself. Like what is driving those expectations? Is it fear? Like, is it shame? Is it guilt? Uh, is it those kinds of emotions? Or is it because you actually, you know, want to be super healthy and fit and the rest of it? Like you have to really get to know your thoughts and what drives them. And in my opinion, someone who does think, judge other people is super, super hard on themselves super judgmental of themselves, super struggling themselves, and I wouldn't want to take advice off someone like that. Either. It tends to be stemmed from jealousy or comparing or something negative. I think we're all anxious about just seeing people more than anything. Yeah. Um, how do we act? How, rather than ability-wise, I know I'm, I'm, I can get very anxious around groups. Um, I had very bad anxiety when I was pregnant. I thought everyone hated me and it really started getting to me. Like I literally, I wouldn't even go to a kid's birthday party. I cried, I just spent the whole afternoon crying. I said to Joe, I just, I can't go. I literally got so like upset about it. And so I know I've got to just put myself out there and just know my friends will still be there. That's, I think what you just have to do, isn't it? We're all in the same boat. We're all in this together probably most people I know feel like that. Not just now, but generally in life. And I think this time has amplified everyone's emotions. And I think it's a time where we have to really, really go out of our way to practice self-kindness and self-compassion. And it's gonna feel really unnatural and unauthentic to begin with. But ultimately it's gonna serve us so much, not just individually, but as a collective. And the way that that starts is not necessarily always going over your past and thinking about things that you've done or things that might happen, um, but just to be with what you're doing right now. So being in the present, noticing what's going on around you, really being in the conversations that you're having, you know, 
when you're having them, which isn't very frequently, you know, mindfully listening, um, the rest of it. Because what happens is you start to notice that your body is constantly sending you information and it's reacting emotionally to things that ordinarily you probably might not have noticed. These emotions are super intense and I think actually the most important thing to take away is not to beat yourself up for feeling anxious, for feeling fearful, um, don't be too hard on yourself, don't have a go at yourself for feeling that way because in this time that's completely rational. What does matter is how you deal with it after the fact. So whilst it's happening, just completely be with the feeling, cry, lock yourself in your room if you need to, but ultimately notice, you know, what, what can I do now? You know, I felt it now, I'm being here with it, I'm honoring it, I'm honoring this feeling, I'm acknowledging these thoughts that are coming up for me, and what can I do now? Um, afterwards because I don't want to spend like the whole day or the whole week feeling like this and the way you do that is through self-compassion practices and that looks like journaling that looks like meditation that looks like affirmations whatever floats your boat you find it out it's out there if you are someone who is feeling overwhelmed feeling anxious about going back to the gym or just generally feeling anxious anyway or even depressed you know, take power, take charge, listen to audiobooks, listen to podcasts, do the research and really try and get on top of your mind because ultimately you know yourself better than anyone else. That's why, that's why you cut. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> my <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> um, I've only Googled how to kill your husband a few times, so <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's fine, I'm fine. <laughs> I wish I'd applied some makeup because I'm feeling pretty rough and I'm trying to get better lighting by lifting the camera up. He's on mute. <laughs> Should we try that again? <laughs> Gotta sort that OnlyFans page out. Um, so I didn't push him out of my vagina. <laughs> Sorry, you can edit that if you want. <laughs> 